uh, Jenna Tiffany. Uh, so she has her own digital consultancy called Let's Talk Strategy. She was the founder of that. Uh, she's also a member of the prestigious uh, DMA Marketing Council um, and also um, on the regional board for CIM. Uh, she's really excellent. We're really glad to have her here. She's spoken at conferences before, and today she'll be speaking about uh, strategies for email marketing. Thank you very much, and I'll leave it to Jenna. Thank you. Okay, so firstly, sorry that we're starting a little bit late. The videos in and presentations always are a little bit touch and go, but they're trying to get sound to come out of that as well as it playing. It's just, it was a little bit too much. So hopefully it's going to work later on and it'll be worth it. So, um, yes, thanks for the introduction, Stefan. So I'm Jenna Tiffany. I'm the founder and strategy director of my own consultancy for Let's Talk Strategy. Prior to that, I worked client side um, in technology, but also travel, financial services, and in B2B organizations. Um, but I've consulted with a number of brands. So today I'm going to talk through my top five steps on using a strategy to make your email marketing perform better for your business. So these are just a couple of the examples of the brands that I've worked with in terms of consultancy and the brands I've worked with within my current organization as well. Um, as Stefan mentioned, I'm a member of the DNA Email Council, which is an elected member. Um, and within that council, we talk about topics within the email industry, create best practice guides, reports, and research, which I'll be touching on as well. So I just want to start by actually taking a step back and looking at all of the messages that consumers get on a daily basis because we're always in it as marketers. Sometimes it's, we kind of forget actually how much our consumers are having to take on board, how many messages they see and how much we're competing against as well. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes just to reflect on this. So we all do it when we don't know the answer to a question. We Google it, but actually we do this 40,000 times a second, 40,000 times a second across the world. That's 3.5 billion times a day that we're going into Google asking for information. That's a huge amount of information available there to you, but also to your consumers. YouTube, 300 hours of video uploaded every single minute of every single day. 300 hours is a huge amount. Facebook, every 60 seconds is 510,000 comments. 23, two, sorry, 293,000 statuses are updated to tell you what people have for breakfast. And then there's 136,000 photos to show you what they ate for breakfast as well on top of that. Every 60 seconds, there's 350,000 tweets. And that equates to 500 million tweets every single day. And the lifespan of a tweet is a mere three seconds because there's so much refreshing of the feed going on, so it just dies within three seconds unless it's retweeted, liked, and so on. Instagram, 95 million photos and videos are uploaded every single day. And for LinkedIn, they have 106 million active monthly users across the globe. Three million users share content on a weekly basis. And on average, a user spends 17 minutes every month on LinkedIn. I know for a fact I spend way more than that just by searching through the feed. But what's really, really interesting with LinkedIn, and particularly if you're a B2B organization, is that a LinkedIn user is four times more likely to visit your website than a Facebook user, which I thought was a really interesting stat. So if you have got LinkedIn up there on your social strategy for a B2B organization, it's definitely something to look more into. So what does this mean for email? Email is an incredibly populated place. You will know how competitive, competitive it is. You'll know from your own inbox, you've probably got thousands of unread emails. I've just created a new Gmail and already I have 1,800 unread emails. I've just found it really hard to manage my inbox. So with email, 269 billion emails are sent every single day. That equates to the average person getting 121 e emails in their inbox every day. And 85 of those are marketing-related emails. So that's how much you're competing against on a daily basis. Half of the world's population uses email, which I just find a really scary stat. Half the world's population is using email. And every year I get asked, is email going to die? Is this the last time we should ever start using email marketing? Every year I get the same question. And actually it's estimated to grow to 319 billion emails being sent every single day by 2021. So email's definitely not going to die. So how can you get the most out of it? But what this actually creates 
is that we all start to look a little bit like this. And we're all getting bombarded with a lot of messages from customers are getting bombarded with a lot of messages. And if they aren't right at that moment in time, you'll lose the engagement of your subscriber. You may never actually get them back. And I'll touch on that with some examples a little bit later on. What it also means is that we're increasingly impatient. So we don't have the time and the patience anymore to scroll through our inbox, take everything in, we want to skim read, action on it, and deal with it there and then. We'll come back to it later, but have it archived sensibly in an area where we can find it. We just don't have time to be skimming through hundreds of amounts of content and information. So it's really important to make sure that your emails are really concise as well and that they are targeted to your customer base. And what happens to those brands that don't keep up? They end up like these ones, no longer existing. These brands fail to innovate. They didn't keep up with their customers' needs and demands. And now, and now they, they cease to exist as businesses. It's the same in the inbox. You can lose the engagement of a subscriber incredibly quickly just from that one email that you send. If it's not spot on, it's really, really hard to get that engagement back. So what does that mean? You only have one shot, really, to get it right, because the attention span is really, really limited now. People are spending more time in the inbox, but they're doing it on a more regular basis, but they're wanting to get that information that they need there and then, at that moment in time. And if they don't, they'll swipe and delete that email in their inbox. So step one in using strategy is the direction. So where is your business heading? Where, what are you wanting your email marketing to achieve for your business? And then setting a direction for that. So when I'm consulting with a lot of brands and both in B2B and B2C, I ask this question because generally it's not thought about, it's thought that I need to send an email. I've got a database, I need to send an email. But actually, why are you sending that email? What's the purpose of sending it? What are you trying to achieve by sending that communication? So I just want to ask you all, how many of you have a planned approach to your email marketing or know within your teams, if you're not responsible for email, actually have a planned strategy? Or do you just, on a week by week basis, it's really ad hoc? So if you have a planned strategy, put your hand up. Okay, it's funny, the majority of this half of the room. So you guys are more of the ad hoc. So I'm going to guess on a daily basis, the guys that are the ad hoc, this side, are starting to look a little bit like this guy here, maybe on a regular basis. We get a little bit stressed, we're actually you've just got so much activity that you need to just try and get out, and you're just firefighting. So my recommendation is always to think about having a planned approach for 80 to 90% of your email activity, and then 10 to 20% have it as an ad hoc activity. So your ad hoc is you've got a new product release that may you didn't know about before, you've got a message you have to communicate that you couldn't foresee before, something's changed in your industry, you need to communicate it, it's something that you can have planned. But don't have 90% of your activity to be ad hoc, because you'll just firefight, you're not getting the most out of the channel. And this is where strategy comes in, because it is there to help. And I think in the industry we've made such a big deal out of the word strategy that people think it's this thing over here, and it's really, really hard to achieve. And that just isn't true. Strategy is there to give you a plan of achieving your goals and objectives. It's that simple. And your goal could just be that you want to sell more of your products to a certain segment. And your email marketing is to help you achieve that. And you plan out how you're going to do that. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. It can be really straightforward. So it's really important to define the why before the how. Now in the email space particularly, technology is a big player, naturally, because you need a technology to send your email. And I've worked with, for a technology provider, so I know how important technology is. But you need to define what you're wanting to do with it, what you're wanting to do with your email before choosing a technology. So I came across a comment on LinkedIn yesterday of someone looking for the technology. Didn't put any information in terms of what they actually wanted to do with that technology. They just needed new tech because Mailchimp wasn't good enough for them. You can get the te you can get the technology, but then it will not fit to what you want to achieve as a business if you haven't thought through what you wanted to use it for. There's a real common uh, industry problem with email marketing. So definitely define the why, and then think about how you're going to do it. So what technology is going to help you achieve that? So step two are the tactics. So then how are you going to get there? So MoFara has a clear strategy, 
He wants to win the Olympics. He wants to win gold. That's his strategy, his goal, and his ambition. His tactics to do that is his daily training. If you follow him on Instagram, he literally trains every single day to achieve that goal. And that's your tactics for email marketing. It's the day-to-day -day activity, and your strategy is your overall plan to achieving that. That's really, really important to define the two, because again, it's a little bit of a blurred area sometimes between the strategy and the tactics. And they both work hand-in-hand -hand with each other, but tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat, because